Hi folks, today we're going to talk about descriptive statistics. So statistics have two basic camps. There's the descriptive statistics and the inferential statistics. And descriptive statistics do that. They describe. They're going to either quantify or summarize the variable or a characteristic or attribute of a variable. And we use these to help explain the sample population that is being analyzed in the inferential statistic. An inferential statistic is going to infer, uh, which means we're hoping to be able to generalize our information to larger populations. We typically analyze relationships between two or more variables. And again, our intention is to generalize. Whenever we're writing our inferential statistic results, we always want to include and present the descriptive statistic results. That way people know characteristics of the population that you're talking about. So let's get started. So when we're going to run descriptives, let's start with breaking down what we need to know and what we need to have so that we can report and can present, analyze, report the descriptives accurately. The measure of your variable will determine which descriptives you will report. Just always know this. It's not always going to be the same. For example, age can be reported depending upon how it is measured. So you can't just say, oh, whenever I have age, it's going to be reported this way. It's always going to depend on how the data is measured. So the level of measurement is going to matter. Let's break this up a little. The measure of your variable, whether it is nominal, ordinal, or scale, will determine which descriptives, whether we report a mean, a median, or a mode, you will report. going to break it down one more time. The measure of your variable, whether it's nominal, ordinal, or scale, will determine which descriptives, whether you choose mean, median, or mode, you will report. Now, the mean, median, and mode you should recognize as the measure of central tendency. And I just sort of ran out of room, but always whenever you're reporting the measure of central tendency, you will also couple that with a measure of variance or dispersion or spread. You also need to remember, whenever we are reporting something, especially in descriptives, we want two pieces of information. We want the measure of central tendency, which is either the mean, median, or mode. And second, we want the measure of dispersion, which is the standard deviation, range, or frequency. The variable measure or the variable type will determine which one you're going to use. And we only report one measure of central tendency. We don't report all three or more than one. Think about this when you're trying to remember that you need two pieces of information. We do this in real life. If I'm gonna set a friend up on a blind date and I tell you, oh, he's great, he's about five foot 11, okay, that doesn't give my friend any sort of indication of what that person's body style is. If I say, oh, he's five foot 11 and 190 pounds, you can picture him now. If I say he's five foot 11 and 450 pounds, again, you can picture him. That second piece of information gives us something that we can use that helps us gain a more complete understanding and picture of what's happening. Um, we do this a lot when you talk about maybe uh, blonde hair and blue eyes, brown hair, brown eyes. We, we, we tend to offer a second piece of information quite often. We want to do this with our descriptive statistics as well. And we'll get into that more in a little bit more in this video and in other videos as well. So we need to understand what our variable measurements are. What's the level of measure? If you recall, nominal variables are qualitative or categorical. Some examples might be gender or yes, no, true, false, ethnicity, uh, favor, oppose. Those would be nominal. What color group were you in? Red, blue, green. Something that's in a category and there's no ranking or order to it. 
An ordinal variable is also a categorical variable, uh, but the, or the items or the attributes are ranked or ordered, and there is unequal spacing between them. For example, a Likert scale, the spacing between them is very subjective. Grade level, which would be freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Um, first, second, and third place. There, there may not be the exact same measure between first and second or second and third. So these are not equal measures between them. And they are categories, but the categories are in order. Now scale variables, which would include both interval or ratio, or also known as interval or ratio, these are continuous measures of a variable. There's equal spacing and they are quantitative. Some examples for that would include the number of years in school. So it would be the number of years. Um, the difference between three years and four years is 365 days. The difference between three years and 13 years is 3,650 th two days or something, depending upon the leap year days. Uh, weight of something, temperature of something, those would be scale variables. When we talk about a measure of central tendency, which is a second piece that we need to know as far as reporting, we need to understand the, meaning, the mean, the median, and the mode. So if we had our data, which is over here on the left-hand side, we have nine data values, and we want to know what the mean is, or what the median is, or what the mode is, if you'd like, you could try to pause the screen right now and try to do this on your own, because when I go to the next screen, you're going to get the answers. But let's go ahead and move on to the next screen. So the mean, well for the mean, we're going to add up all of these numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, 16, 20, 34, and we're going to divide by the fact that we had 9 cases. So 34 divided by 9 is 3.78. That is the mean. And that's what, how we usually call something the average. We also have the median. And the median is when you put the attributes in order. And you pick the one that is literally in the middle. So there's four on one side. This is the fifth one. And there's four on the other side. This is the median. It's the one that's in the middle right here. And then we also have mode. There are, mode is when we have the most of a, of, a, of a response, and mode for this one, there are four twos. We have four, one, two, three, four twos. We have three fours, and we have two sevens. So two is our mode. Now, we need to understand the level of me measure or the measurement of the variable. We need to understand the measure of central tendency. We also need to understand the measure of dispersion or the measure of variability or variance. It's sometimes called a few different things. So we know our mean. These are our measures of central tendency right here. But we also need that second piece of information. So for mean, we typically add to that or couple with that the standard deviation. And I have the standard deviation formula written out right here, which is the sum of the x minus the x bar, or the mean, the x mean, it's squared over n minus 1. So if we took, let's say for example, our first number, which is x, our x is 2, our mean we have right here is 3.78, that's going to be squared, and we're adding this to we do this for all of them because it's the sum of all of them. So we add this to our other four twos. We have three of the fours. And we're going to take all of this, which I've calculated out. You can take the time if you'd like to look at it. We're going to take all of this, add it together. So we have our sum. And we're going to divide it by n over n minus 1, I'm sorry, which would be divided by 8. So we end up with uh, the square root of 4.196, which equals 2.05. So 2.05 is our standard deviation. So if we were to write this out, we would say our mean is 3.78 and our standard deviation is 2.05. Now for median, oftentimes you'll see a range written, which is from 2 to 7. Our range from our minimum to our maximum is 2 to 7. Um, and for mode, 
we often report the frequencies. And again, we would report two pieces. We would report 44%. The twos were 44% with an N or a count of four, whereas the fours were 33% of the sample with a count of three, and the sevens were 22% of the sample, which was a count of two. Now, what are we gonna do? What do we do with all of this information? So let's put it all together. We can now understand the differences of variable levels of measurement. We know what measures of central tendency are, and we know what measures of dispersion are. But how do we determine how to report what it is we need to report? So for nominal variables, we report the mode and the frequencies. For ordinal variables, you wanna report the median, and here is the abbreviation for median right here, and the spread from minimum to maximum. And for scale variables, we want to report the mean and the standard deviation. And ultimately, we're going to put all of this together so that we can actually report our results. When we do this, we need to remember that we're reporting our results in APA format, and there are quite a few rules that we need to be aware of. One of the biggest rules that I see is uh, oftentimes where students make mistakes is that we need to italicize all Latin, not Greek, all Latin statistical abbreviations. So when we're using an N for count or M for mean or SD or a lowercase n for the subpopulation count, an F for our ANOVA, a T for our T test, etc., we need to italicize the abbreviation, not the numbers that go with it, just the abbreviation, just that letter needs to be italicized. Another big one is that we want to space before and after a sign. So if we have a less than, a greater than, or an equal sign, we want to treat these as a word. A word has a space before and after it. It's not touching something. So we want to be sure and do that. You also want to be aware that we use an uppercase N when we're discussing a whole population or an entire population and a lowercase N when we're discussing a subpopulation. For example, students with the uppercase N were 200, but males were, with the lowercase N, 123, and females were 77. And as you can see, my N is italicized, but my equal, my parentheses, my 77 is not. You can also see that I have a space before and after the equal signs. When you're referring to race, we want to use an uppercase B and W for black and white. We always want to report the actual p-value unless the p-value is less than 0 0.001. When you're reading in books, they'll often say that the p was less than 0 0.05. It's an example that they're using. However, you want to report the exact p-value. p equals 0 0.092, 0 0.003, 0 0.041. You want to report exactly what the p equals. The only time we don't do this is if we know that p is less than 0 0.001. And you want to make sure not to report frequencies for scale variables. And with practice, all of this will make sense. So right now I'm just throwing a bunch of rules at you, but it'll, it'll come together, I promise. So let's take a look at some examples of how we would report the variables. For nominal variables, we would write something very similar to this. Respondents selected the gender they identified with, with the mode of female. Over 63% selected female and almost 27% selected male. You'll notice when I'm reading, I sort of skim over most of the parenthetical information. And this is because these are details that my brain can go back and look at, but I don't need that to have a complete sentence. And we write this in a very, we, we, we're very purposeful when we write it this way so that you can read the sentence without, if these were deleted, the sentences would still make sense. And again, we do do that on purpose and it takes a little practice. For ordinal variables, this is how we would write our results. Participants selected their happiness level from four choices ranging from not happy to extremely happy with a median of slightly happy. 
Category responses highlighted that 46.7% selected slightly happy, while 19.7% selected happy, followed by 18.7% choosing very happy and 14.9% choosing not happy. And again, you can see that I followed the APA rules. I have the indented paragraph. I have my uppercase N for my total population and I use lowercase Ns for all of the subpopulations. My ends are all italicized because they are Latin abbreviations. I even have median italicized because that is the Latin abbreviation for median. I have put my variable attributes in quotation marks, not italics, which I believe is the new way we're doing this for APA 7th. And let's look at how we would write scale variables. Age of the participants ranged from 27 years old to 78 years old. And at the end of that sentence, we have the mean and the standard deviation. Our mean is 46.71 and our standard deviation is 9.88. Now, even though this sentence is very short, I have my count, I have, we have a spread here from 27 years to 78 years old which we don't even need that because we already have, this is our measure of central tendency, our mean, and this is our measure of dispersion or variability, which is our standard deviation. These two pieces of information give us all, all we need to know for descriptives, well, and the count, gives us all we need to know for descriptives for this variable because the variable is a scale variable. Another thing you're going to want to do when you're reporting descriptives is we often want to think of graphs and charts. So depending upon the level of measurement, the measure of central tendency, and the measure of dispersion, this is going to help determine which graph or charts you're going to use. Nominal variables, you typically want a pie chart or a bar chart. A pie chart we select when you, they say when you have less than seven or less categories. If you have more than that, it looks really pretty, but it's not very good to read. A bar chart is a chart where the lines are not, the, the, the bars are not touching. For ordinal variables, it's the same. You're going to want to use a pie chart or a bar chart. And for scale variables, we want to use a histogram, a scatter plot, or a box plot, depending upon what it is you're trying to convey. And a histogram is the one with the bars, but the bars are all touching. And that's because in scale variables, the numbers are a continuous and they are touching, whereas with ordinal variables, they are in categories that are in order, but they're not necessarily touching. So we have a few examples. This, because these are all touching, would be a histogram. Here we have some box plots. We have some scatter, scatter plots. These would be bar charts, because these are not touching in between. And here we have some pie charts. I want to give a special thanks to the people that I got these slides from. I love this slide deck. It's from Slides Carnival. Definitely a, a shout out there. Got a really cool photograph from Unsplash. And then the rest of the charts and graphs were from me. But anyway, just wanted to give a shout out to Slides Carnival. Very nice. Hope everybody has a great day.